Welcome to Sanctuary Soil and this video series on first time garden basics. My name is Aisha and I'm here to share with you all of the things that I learned in my first years as a gardener. So far we have gone through the four steps of first time basics and that's the step of why do you grow a garden, then where do you grow a garden within your, you know, your space, when do you grow a garden? Because obviously uh, time zones uh, and uh, gardening seasoning, you know, it's all different. And of course, we talked also about in what, right? Do we do it in garden beds, in pots? Uh, do we do it in the ground? So all the different kinds of options that you have of where or in what do you do your garden? In this step number five is going to be all about what do we plant? And I know many of you have been waiting for this video because that's the most fun part, right? When we start talking about what vegetables, what varieties, etc. And so that's what this video is all about. So let's just hit, go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we need to talk about in plant selection is what do you select, especially as a first time gardener? And this is something that is very important. One of the things that I think I was lucky uh, in when I did my first garden was that I just connected with a, a local gardener that was selling starter plants and basically a basic kit of the specific plants that most people would start with. And I think that limiting my selection uh, in that way by someone that knew what the basics were was very helpful for me. And so my suggestion is going to be along the lines of start basic, after all, this is first time, you know, first garden basics. And then as you get to learn and experience it, you can expand what you plant and grow. And so the first thing that I would suggest is that you start with what you and your family will eat. One of the things that I realized that there were some things down the road when I, you know, seasons came and I started planting things that we just wouldn't eat. And so things will either go to waste or will actually end up in my compost pile, which we'll talk about that in another video. And so I think that, you know, you want to set yourself for success. And the best way to do that is by starting with just the basic things that you know you and your family will eat and enjoy, even if that means three things. And so first of all, go into your kitchen and look at the type of things that you cook and see the vegetables that you buy in the grocery store. And that is where you start, okay? So go to your kitchen and start looking, right? And so as you're seeing what vegetables you have in your refrigerator or in your counter, make a list of those specific vegetables, okay? Once you have that list of those basic vegetables, that is where you should start. Now, I will also encourage you to add one or two other neat stuff that maybe you don't eat, but that you would like to try, right? And I'm gonna give you a little bit of suggestions uh, in a little bit. As you're picking what type of variety of, you know, of plant you wanna grow, just wanted to let you know and give you the heads up, there is all kinds of varieties. I mean, look at this. This is just some of the varieties of tomatoes that I found out of my little stash. I mean, you can find, of course, red tomatoes, and yellow tomatoes, and purple tomatoes, and orange tomatoes, and then you can have high production tomatoes, or tomatoes for tomato paste. I mean, the options are tremendous. You know, some of the things that you can, you know, and that's not just a regular slice of tomatoes. Then you can have cherry tomatoes. One of my favorite cherry tomatoes is the Italian eyes yellow uh, cherry tomatoes. I love th them. I love making a garlic and uh, white wine sauce with them. You know, again, because you want to select plants, seeds and plants of things that you're going to eat, right? And so you need to keep that in mind. Now, if you like, for example, tomatillo sauce, why not grow tomatillos? And, you know, if you want to experiment something that you have never tried, one of the things that was one of my favorites on the last season was uh, pineapple ground cherries. They were amazing. They are like little pineapple kisses. And they're like mini cherries, mini cherry tomatoes. So as you can see, it's, the options are tremendous. And so 
just pick one or two. Remember, keep it simple and don't go overboard. And believe me, you're going to have a great time. But at the beginning, being a first garden, you want to make sure that you keep it simple so that you can learn in the process, see how things grow and start making your notes about your garden so that in the next season you make changes and add-ons and the next season more changes and more add-ons and eventually, you know, actually you always have changes and add-ons. <laughs> uh, but if you do the first experience, a positive one, I promise you that you're gonna be happy about that. Now, the next thing that you need to think about is you wanna make your garden beautiful. So even though you have selected the vegetables that you wanna grow, you may want to add some flowers to it. And you want to do that for two reasons. Number one is because, like I said, you want your garden to be beautiful. And number two is because flowers attract pollinators and pollinators will help you be more successful in your garden. Here are a few examples of the flowers that I'm going to plant this season. I love marigolds and I love zinnias and I love nasturtiums. And so this is the flowers that I'm gonna be including in my garden this season. Okay, once you have your list, now go to your vegetable planting chart that you should either get online or in your local extension uh, office where it will give you a chart for all the vegetables that grow in your area. And you want to have the planting chart for your area because that way you will have your local uh, dates. Because remember, your um, growing season depends on the zone that you're in and the, and the size of your growing season, right? When your last and first frost date are. So you need to go to your local planting chart. Once you have the list of the things you want to grow, make a note of number one, what is a recommended seed starting date? That's assuming that you're gonna start from seed some things. I, rec I don't recommend that you do that. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But you may want to explore and try starting things from seed. And so for that, you need to know when should you start those seeds. The next thing that you wanna put, make a note of, whether it's in a notebook or maybe you like Excel, like me, then you write your germination time. Meaning how long it takes from the time you plant the seed for the plant to germinate. And then how long it takes for you to, when do you need to transplant uh, into the ground or your bed uh, so that you know what that timeline is. And then how long it takes for that particular plant to go from you know, a seedling to maturity, meaning when you start harvesting. And then of course the length of the harvest season for that particular plant. And it's very different depending on what you're planting. If you're going to be starting from seed, there's going to be a couple of things that you need to know about seeds that you may find if you start looking on the internet. And that is, you know, the terms of GMO, heirloom, hybrid, and F1 hybrid. So I'm just going to give you a brief description of what each of these things are so that you don't, you know, you're not scared when you are trying to figure out what seeds to, to buy. Okay? So first of all, GMO or genetically modified uh, means that um, they are obviously those plants are genetically modified. And something that this is something that you do not need to worry if you're buying seeds from a local retail store because it is illegal in the United States. By the way, this, is, this applies in the United States. It is illegal in the United States to buy or to sell genetically modified uh, seeds. So you don't have to worry about that. Now the term heirloom, all that means, heirloom means that this is a type of seed or plant that has been passed on from generation to generation with no mixing or no changes. That means that it is a, a tomato, that uh, a type of tomato or a variety of tomato or peppers or whatever the plant may be that uh, has been stabilized and has been the same type of tomato through the years, year after year. And so I'm not really sure exactly how many years does, do you have to have a stable uh, fruit or plant before it becomes uh, a heirloom, but it is decades, right? And so that's all that that means. Her heirloom means that it is, it is something that at some point in time was mixed and eventually it became a stable seed, meaning that whatever you plant as a seed is what you're going to get as a result on the plant or fruit, okay? 
Now the word hybrid, it all that hybrid means is that it's a mix of great plants, right? That they are mixed together to get a better result. And they, and one of the ways that they do that is, for example, that they pollinate if with a female flower into a male flower of different species, and that becomes a hybrid. It's not a bad thing. It just happens that they just mix two different varieties together to come up with a third variety, and they just wanted to make it a little bit better. Think of it as you know raising puppies, right? You may have you know a German Shepherd crossed over with a um, Rottweiler, and when you mix them, it comes up with a different type of dog, right? That's just being basically a hybrid between a German Shepherd and a Rottweiler. So the same thing with the plants. You are basically just mixing one with the other and you come up with a different variety. Now, the thing is though, that if you were to save seeds from that hybrid, the next generation may not look anything like either the one that you, that you came up with or the prior two, but it's another mix, right? And so it takes a lot of years. Remember, to become a heirloom, you have to have that stable production for many years, even decades, to make sure that the seed that you plant is, is, is going to be, is going to produce the exact same result as the, uh, the plant from where you got the seed. And so that is basically hybrid, it's a mixing of two things. Now you're also going to see some, in some, in some uh, um, seed packets the word F1 hybrid. And all this means is that they have made a hybrid, a specific hybrid or a mix between two plants to come up with a specific result. Usually in the areas of pest resistance, right? So basically they just mix two varieties that they know that at the end either makes the fruits bigger or they make the fruits in a different specific color or maybe uh, better pest resistance. That's all that that means. So when you go buy seeds, you basically don't have to worry about you know which ones are okay because literally if they're buying in, in any retail store they're gonna be they're gonna be okay as you're selecting your plants something else that you need to know is what it is that you are going to be harvesting from those plants so for example you're gonna have actually three things three possibilities you are either going to be collecting their leaves you're gonna be collecting their fruit or you're gonna be collecting their roots for example, in the areas of leaves, they are lettuces, Swiss chard, kale, right? So whenever you're growing that, what you're doing is you're, you are harvesting the leaves. So that is what you harvest to eat. When it comes to fruits, those are things, is a plant that then produces flowers and the flower becomes the fruit that you collect. So for example, tomatoes, peppers, um, uh, okra, right? So, so these are the plants that grow and then they, the, the fruit become, sorry, the flowers become the fruit. And then the third one is roots. And roots are, you, you're going to plant this and what you are going to be actually harvesting are the roots. That is basically carrots, beets, radishes, potatoes, or actually potatoes are actually tubers, which is a little different, but I don't want to make it too complicated. The reason I want you to know that is because when we go to the next step of planning your garden, these are things that you're gonna to need to consider. And so as you're thinking, what are the plants that you want to uh, grow in your first garden? Not only do you want to select the things that you know you're gonna eat, but then you need to really learn how you harvest those things because if you, especially if you only have a limited size garden, then how they grow is gonna be very important. Now, I'm gonna go in a lot more detail in the next step of planning, okay? Something else that you need to think about when you're thinking as to what to, to plant in your first garden is do I start seeds or do I start seeds or do I plant starter plants? And I mentioned that for me, I started with starter plants. That was, I think, the best uh, choice for me and I think is the best choice for any first-time gardener that way you take out the whole learning curve of growing from seed. Trust me, it's a whole art and once I have a detailed video on it, you can look at the tutorial you know, link in the, the comments of this video. So where to get these starter plants? I will tell you that they are everywhere, right? Uh, they are in grocery stores, you can find them in places like Walmart, 
Uh, I found it in my Kroger this last year, hardware stores like Home Depot, they always have starter plants. And of course, your local garden centers are great sources for starter plants and, uh, and great selection. I, one of the things I noticed in the last couple of years is the selection is getting better and better everywhere you look. And so it is kind of fun to go over there and buy those plants. They might cost you a little bit more than if you started from seed, but the possibility for success is much higher if you do that. Now, if you're planning to start some from seed and you want to buy seeds, then where can you buy those seeds? Again, everywhere. Uh, it's amazing how um, how you can really you know, find all the seeds. Once you become a gardener, you're going to see that they're everywhere. The same places that you find uh, starter plants, you're going to find seeds. You can even find them at the dollar store. And at the dollar store, you can buy like four packets for a dollar. Right now, the difference between the dollar store seeds and any other store seeds is literally all it is is that it has less seeds per packet. That's the only difference. And so, if you if you want to uh, start cheap, I mean, you can't get any cheaper than that. And the reality is that you really only end up planting a few seeds in every packet. Every time I open a packet, that packet that I buy lasts me several seasons because you don't use that many seeds, especially if you have a smaller garden. So my recommendation is, if you're gonna do some seeds, just go to the dollar store, and they have a pretty good selection for you to pick from. And let me show you a video here on uh, the things that I found there. All right, so here are the seeds that I got from the dollar store. Remember, there are four, four packets of seeds for a dollar. And for about six dollars, I got enough seeds that would be perfect for a first time gardener. Obviously, you had the basics with carrots and radishes and tomatoes and squash and spinach and lettuce and a cabbage. Got some green beans, which are you know great for nutrition. Beautiful flowers, not only great for pollinators, but to make it beautiful and a couple of herbs. I could have gotten some basil, but I already have so much basil, I didn't want to get any. But you could have had basil, and you could have had, um, you know, other parsley, and etc. But this is a great, for $6, if you're a first time gardener, this is a great start. One of the things that I recommend too is, as you are selecting your seeds, right? We said we're gonna, first you're gonna go in the kitchen, you're going to see what you already eat in your house and what you go to buy in the grocery store. You are going to make a list of those and you know see what are the variations of, uh, of uh, plants that you may wanna get from there. And then start looking at the reviews of those particular plants, right? See what the people say, see how they grow, how tall they are, how wide they are, how difficult they are, because some things are more difficult than others. And so definitely look at the reviews of that particular thing. And, and literally you can just Google the, 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 the plant, the variety, and a lot of information will come from it. And keep it really basic, right? Do not go overboard with too many things because that way will be a little bit complicated. You wanna have your first garden to be simple but enjoyable so that you can at the end have a harvest that you can be proud of and enjoy the journey of your first garden. All right, so that is the fifth step on first garden basics. And I hope that you learn a lot out of it, that you are starting to make your list and getting ready to go to the next uh, step, which is planning planning your garden. And so in that step, we're actually gonna be looking at your space and start planning how many plants of each ones that you have chosen and where they're gonna go so that you can start planning where you're gonna put all this. And, and based on that, you'll know how many plants you're going to need to start your first garden. All right, see you in the next video.